Florence is smooth, I tell you, <laughs> and I expected uh, no less. And in fact, I'd say that when we first made the decision to do this, I gave him not only his choice of which side he wanted to debate, but whether he would go first or second. And uh, <laughs> I'm starting to regret that. And uh, it's also interesting that I'm trying to think of where those photos came from. I asked my wife just a couple of weeks ago, has, has Lawrence contacted you for any photos? And she just gave me a blank look. And uh, yeah, you'd think I'd know her well enough by now that although I'm, I'm, I suspect you might have gotten them from another source. But anyway, I'll tell you, and speaking of wives, I'm sorry to hear about uh, Polita's experience. That's, uh, that's awful. You know what we do at Wake Forest, though, is just not wet tap people over and over. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in fact, I have to say that if, if we did have a place where we did wet tap people over and over and over, I, I sure I would use spinal catheters too. I mean, that's, that's pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty obvious choice when that's, the, when that's the way you practice. But we don't practice that way. We get an, an occasional, rare occasional wet tap and then have to decide what to do with it. And so I am going to tell you, taking the con side, uh, I have no disclosures as I told you earlier, that when you see this happen, and you know, I had to actually simulate this for, to even get a photograph of this since it does happen so rarely again at Wake Forest. Uh, <laughs> that, that is a, a simulation of a wet tap. When you see this, the correct answer is to recite an epidural. So it's also as, as smooth, Lawrence is smooth. One of the ways he does that, he, he cherry picks and, and massages data just so beautifully. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to use some of the same data to, to uh, say just the opposite. But, um, and in fact, I'm going to use American data for, for what people in the United States are doing. Yeah. <laughs> and not, not only did he use UK data for current practice, he made 50% sound like a great thing and, and a decline in rate over time as, as well. But you know, anyway, in the United States, it's certainly the, the majority of uh, ASRA members, at least in a survey, will do the right thing and recite an epidural. And the reason is because there are, there are a whole list of reasons not to choose a spinal catheter. And I'm going to go through these. Infection, spinal cord trauma, neurotoxicity, inappropriate injections, and my favorite, I'll get to the, uh, in a minute, the accidental lumbar CSF drain. And they are not protective against postural puncture headache. And, and I, I expected Lawrence to spend a little more time on that, but I'm still going to, uh, he showed you one meta-analysis, which was uh, rather pitiful, and even told you that the meta-analysis didn't show that it's protective. I, 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 have to, I expected more out of Lawrence than that, but so anyway, I came with my big guns on uh, being not protective against postural puncture headache, and he, uh, he just ran the other way. So. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that any of you, I'm not going to say that I've never used a spinal catheter, and I'm not going to suggest that any of you who do, do so routinely, are reckless. I'm not going to suggest that uh, Lawrence is reckless, but I'll tell you something I do know about Lawrence. He has the um, Asian alcohol dehydrogenase uh, enzyme uh, variant, which leads to aldehyde buildup and, and uh, toxic levels of aldehyde if he were to consume alcohol. Yet you put a beer in front of the guy, and <laughs> it's uh, it's bottoms up. Again, not not saying he's reckless. I, I'm just uh, just telling telling you what I know. Okay. I also know that he has a history of uh, an affinity for motorcycles, and I can neither confirm nor deny that this is an actual photograph of Lawrence and his motorcycle. But with the the old the whole recklessness thing, I think you get the picture. So. Here is the uh, list that we will go through one by one. So as far as infection goes, again, Lawrence uh, cherry-picked some data to try to say that uh, catheters are safe, but he didn't tell you about patients, or I'm sorry, first we're first going to tell you about lumbar catheters in the epidural space being very quickly colonized, even if you use appropriate technique, and that gives you a spinal uh, catheter that, that's a free way for uh, bacteria to enter the spinal space. And that's borne out in case reports like this that he didn't decide to tell you about. And this is one of, uh, uh, one of the case reports of catheter-related meningitis. So here's a young woman, not unlike Polita, who just came in to have her first baby and thought everything was going to be wonderful and, and great, and she had an accidental wet tap. But they chose to place a spinal catheter, which I guess they do at the Brigham now. 
So they also thought that if you left it in a long time, it would reduce headache, which I'm going to show you in a moment is not the case. And she developed a headache, but not the postural kind, the kind that is associated with nuchal rigidity and photophobia and a temperature of 42.8. Her CSF cultured staph epidermidis, and she was treated with IV vancomycin or rifampin. Fortunately for her and for the people taking care of her, that was successful, and she was discharged without sequelae, but that is certainly not always going to be the case with bacterial meningitis. Then there's spinal cord trauma. Okay, so one of my, the, the, the residents will tell you, I tell them over and over and over, if you're wrong, you're wrong high. And in fact, a lot of times they are really high. And I'm glad that we have, uh, Brendan's going to tell us about ultrasound, and I've, I've used ultrasound in our department now to, uh, to show this. But the studies show it as well, uh, MRI studies and ultrasound studies now, the same thing over and over, that even as experienced as, as uh, anesthesia care providers as we become, and when we're placing an epidural, we're pretty good at knowing where we are, but if we're wrong, we're wrong high. The adult cord should end at L1, but it doesn't always. It can be lower than that, and you are often a lot higher than you think. So if you get a wet tap where the cord is and then try to insert a spinal catheter, you're endangering that spinal cord. Now, I know from my colleagues who work in, in the uh, dog lab and with other animals, tell me that these epidural catheters will go straight into the spinal cord parenchyma with very little resistance and will cause permanent damage to those cords. So that's why when we're doing spinal catheters, you limit the insertion distance, and if there's a paresthesia, desist immediately. I mean, in my opinion, or the way I think of it, a paresthesia with a spinal catheter is much different than a paresthesia in the epidural space. And that is because you have the potential for spinal cord damage there. And then there's neurotoxicity. So as Lawrence uh, glossed over very quickly, the, <laughs> the uh, FDA uh, did ban microcatheters, and I'll admit those are micro, not macro catheters, but they, they banned them for a good reason, and that is cauda equina syndrome. Uh, Ken Drasner demonstrated this eloquently with a glass spine model and showing how the local anesthetic can maldistribute or stay in the area of the cauda equina and high concentrations will result in death of those nerves. And all of the local anesthetics are neurotoxic to some degree, just some are worse than others. So with lidocaine, most of those reports were with higher doses, but there is one with a 100 milligram dose, a very appropriate single dose of lidocaine causing cauda equina syndrome. And then there's 2-chlorprocaine. I know that not everyone uses it. Uh, we use it a lot and, and like it, but it may have a narrower therapeutic window. And when you are injecting into a spinal catheter accidentally, which has been reported, these early reports are all of injections that were intended for the epidural space that became apparent spinal injections. These patients got high block, total spinal, and then permanent neurologic symptoms. And, and those are just some of the early reports. There are a lot of those. And unfortunately, at our institution, we had one that was a subdural catheter that uh, suddenly became a total spinal. And it's not just lidocaine and chloroprocaine or 2-chloroprocaine. Cauda equina has been described with all of these uh, local anesthetics. So we have nearly 100 years history of knowing that when you intentionally inject these things over and over into the spinal space, as you would with a spinal catheter over a long period of time, that historically we are leading to causing damage. Now, Lawrence also disappointed me in not uh, quoting any philosophers. He, he has a... Um, he has a way of doing it. He loves to quote philosophers. And here's one, though, that I think that he has never heard of, Jorge Santillana, who famously said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And there's a picture of Lawrence. Sla <laughs> slamming another beer, putting in another spinal catheter. All right, then there's inappropriate injection. And all of these things have been reported to have been accidentally injected through epidural catheters, and it could happen just as well with a spinal catheter, ephedrine, antibiotics, ether. I put the uh, reference there for you in case you didn't believe it. You can look it up yourself. I have no idea what a syringe of ether was doing where it could be injected through an epidural catheter, but it did. Now, if these things are injected into the subarachnoid space, I, I shudder to think of what would happen. But here's the one I really, con that I get really get worried about, and that is when local anesthetic is intended for the epidural space, like those chloroprocaine uh, case reports I told you about. So Lawrence told you how he carefully labels the door, tells the patient, tells the nurses, tells everybody, no matter what you do, mistakes are going to be made. 
and it really concerns me, especially in a busy teaching center like the one that we have, where shifts change, new people come in, the communication is as good as it can be, m mistakes are still going to happen. And there is there is a safety margin for those mistakes to occur in the epidural space that does not exist in the spinal space. And then one of my favorites, this is a case report, if, um, it weren't, uh, if it weren't true, it would be funny. And, and I think actually, I think we can laugh and hopefully this woman would, uh, would be okay with us laughing about this because she survived this assassination attempt. But this is a case report of a woman who requested labor analgesia, had an unintended dural puncture. They put in a spinal catheter. They left it in after delivery. I, again, hoping it would reduce headache chances or whatever. But 28 hours later, she complained that her bed was wet Indeed, the catheter connector had become dislodged and her entire CSF volume had emptied into the bed. And she did have a raging headache, but eventually uh, recovered uneventfully. But yet another thing that can happen when you're using spinal catheters. Okay, so Lawrence did not disappoint me in uh, the fact that he spent some time with uh, talking about the superior analgesia of uh, spinal catheters, but again, if you were watching and listening carefully, the way he massaged data from uh, spinal studies and epidural studies that had nothing to do with spinal catheters themselves. And all I can say is, here he is giving a lecture on his uh, pet procedure, the dural puncture epidural, where he did talk about this. You, you uh, puncture the dura and then put an epidural into the epidural space without giving drug in the subarachnoid space, and it leads to superior analgesia due to drug crossing across the uh, epidural space. So he contradicted himself a little bit in his own talk. I mean, you can have it both ways, Lawrence. It's either better analgesia or not. But uh, anyway, this is Lawrence right here telling you, recite the epidural. That's basically what that talk is. <laughs> All right. <so laughs> Sorry, Lawrence, there are no rebuttals from the, from the, uh, from the panel. <laughs> All right, so finally, I'm going to finish on this thing about reduced headache, okay? And, uh, and Lawrence did kind of um, move through this pretty quickly, but I'm going to tell you that it does not reduce headache. Spinal catheters do not reduce headache. So here, uh, well, first of all, the first study that was done, the first prospective uh, study done on this was done by uh, Mark Norris and Barbara Layton a while back. And this is where they looked at patients who had accidental dural puncture. The first 21, they recited the catheter. The next 35, they placed a spinal catheter. And they found no difference between, in, between groups in post oral puncture headache or blood patch rates. And, and we could have just ended it there because that is the final answer. But a lot has been done since then, as you saw in his meta-analysis, which showed uh, mostly no, no difference. But uh, the reason is because there are a lot of different ways to design this study, and, and it's pretty messy, really, over the years. I'm just going to show you a couple of um, studies. I thought he was going to do this one for you, but this is one where there were three groups, one where they recited the epidural, group B is where they placed a spinal catheter and then removed it right after delivery, and group C left a spinal catheter in for 24 hours. And they came up with some pretty astounding results. And you can see there, if you look at the top row for postural puncture headache, if you recite the epidural, 92% had a postural puncture headache. And if you left the catheter in for 24 hours, 6%. In fact, I, there you go, red, red circles around them. Now, who's ever even heard of these numbers? You know, 92% has never been reported anywhere in the literature elsewhere as a, a reasonable incidence of postural puncture headache, for, and 6% for that matter. And so I, I'm not sure how those results were come by, but, but I'll show you that there are other studies. There, there are many of them. I'm just going to show you one more, though, to kind of counter that that was done similarly. And what they showed was that they just didn't have a, uh, a not left in group. So they left it in for 24 hours versus a recited epidural. And these are more usual numbers. This, this concurs with other literature and what we expect to see. 52 and 61 percent, no difference in, in post oral puncture headache rates. But what we really need are not these retrospective reviews and so forth and, and uh, a weak meta-analysis. What we need is a prospective, randomized, multi-centered, controlled trial on looking at whether or not you can reduce headache by using spinal catheters. And lo and behold, we have one. So here it is. This was done in the UK, 34 hospitals. They used two protocols, either a spinal catheter or recite the epidural. They rotated it at six months over a two-year or, or at six-month intervals over a two-year period, and all of the spinal catheters were left in 24 to 36 hours, and 
drum roll please, voila, there you have it. No, cha no, no change in headache rate when using spinal catheters, even if you leave them in for 24 hours. So indeed, if that doesn't convince you enough, <laughs> I, I actually had a screenshot of my email, but it had a lot of other information on it, so I decided not to put it here. You can get in trouble. These social media stories you hear about, people getting in trouble tweeting things and so forth, I decided not to put it up. But I will tell you about an email from Lawrence in 2012 when we were preparing for this meeting. Here, he, he's the moderator of a session, just as he is today, and I was supposed to give a talk about this subject in that session whereupon, uh, amongst other discussion, he said to me, I believe that spinal catheters do not reduce postural puncture headache. <laughs> so, the man speaks with a forked tongue. <laughs> but I, I have to tell you though, he, he, he did de-emphasize that, so <laughs> I give him credit for that. So uh, in summary, when you see this, there are two paths you can go down, the spinal catheter or to recite an epidural. But because of that long list of reasons I gave you not to place a spinal catheter, there is one clear choice, and that is to recite the epidural. And I think that's all I have. It is. Thank you. Mm -hmm.